In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to add power to your shed and turn it from something like this into this. We're gonna add lights inside and out, full electricity so that you can run tools, and it really can turn a shed into a full workshop, or you can use some of these ideas on a tiny house or any type of off-grid structure where you wanna put power in, but you don't wanna run any type of a line. I began by running the wire that would distribute the power inside the shed. Now to keep this easy, I'm just using regular Romex. This is 14 gauge stuff, and I tacked it along each beam in the shed. The shed is 16 feet long, and I want it super bright inside when the lights are on, but I'm only installing just this one light box, but this is gonna be more than enough to light this place up. I'm also not using any kind of wire nut. These connectors are called Wegos, and they make connect an electrical wire a lot easier. Another way that I simplified this installation is I don't have any switches to install at all. That means less wire and less work for me, but it also means that the fixtures themselves have to have their own built-in switches. And this ceiling fixture for the light is just a regular ceramic socket with a pull cord. That's an adjustable three panel LED bulb that costs just about $25 and that thing should put out a ton of light. Now onto the outside lighting. Now you could do anything you want here, but I wanted to keep it cheap and simple to install. So I'm gonna just put one single light on the front. So that means I wanna install a dead center above the door. And once I drill my hole for the electrical box, you can see that there was a stud right behind it. But that's not a problem if you use one of these boxes called a pancake box. These are super shallow and they're gonna work perfectly on the front of the shed. With the box mounted, I just needed to drill a hole to pass the wire through. Now I just needed to attach the mounting bracket that came with the new light, strip the electrical wire, attach some Wagos, and then I'm ready to connect everything up. And remember that that electric line is gonna always have power going to it, so you're not gonna want that light on all the time. So this is an LED model that's gonna use a lot less power, but it also has an automatic light sensor, so it's only gonna turn on when it's night, and it'll turn back off during the daytime. With all the fixtures wired up, I now need a way to connect the solar power system to them. Now those systems use regular AC outlets in the back, but my fixtures are all hardwired, so this box is gonna give me a connection point to tie the two systems in. Now that top wire is feeding the fixtures, and I'm gonna use one of these special clamps to hold it tightly. This will prevent that wire rubbing against the metal and possibly causing a short circuit. Now I need a cable that's gonna come from the solar power system into this box. And for that, you want a heavy duty type of cord. You can make or buy one, but in my case, I had this leftover extension cord. So I went ahead and cut it a little bit shorter. Then just strip off that outer insulation, put it through the same clamp into the box. And now I just need to connect all the wires together. Now that Romex feeding all the fixtures has a hot, a neutral, and a ground. And I just need to match them up and connect them together using those same Wago connectors. With everything connected, I just gotta push the wires back into the box and make sure that those wires are pointing upward so that the holes are facing down in case you ever got any water in there. It wouldn't just collect inside the connector. Now to connect everything up, I've just gotta plug that new cord into the back of my solar generator. With the outlets turned on, our lights come on and everything looks like it's working fine. And as you can see, that light is super bright. And on the outside, our new fixture out there is working great and I really like the way this thing looks. Now that fixture only uses about eight watts and the inside light that's super bright uses around 60. So even together, that's not really a huge amount of power. And that brings us to the solar generator itself. Now this one is an EcoFlow Delta Max and it's a pretty heavy duty unit, but I need it because I'm running this well pump and I also want it to be able to run things like a chop or a table saw. But you don't have to go nearly this big. This one is made by Bouge RV. It's actually a Blue Eddy EB70 and it's a smaller unit, but I can plug it right into the wiring. And of course you can see it runs the lights just fine. And because this is more of a mid-size unit, you could definitely still run some tools, battery chargers, what if you want to just run lights in your shed or your budget's really small? Well, you don't have to get either of these type of units because you can actually get a really tiny one like this and this is more than enough to run some lights in a shed. And because of the way you wired it up, you can just plug it right into the back, turn it on, and now those lights are running off this small system. Great about all these solar generators is that all the work is done for you. You buy them, plug them in, and they're ready to use. You certainly could build your own system with batteries, controllers, and wire everything up, but these are gonna save a lot of time, and they also have the benefit that you can take them out or move them anytime you want. And these are gonna only run for so long before they need to get charged up, and the best way to do that is using solar power. And here I'm using a portable 400 watt solar panel, but you can use any type of panel that you like. You can get ones that mount in the roof for a more permanent type of installation, or you can just rig something up like I have. And my cables don't look too good going through this window, but I've got a bulkhead connector coming in, and once I get that, I'm gonna run the wires in the back of the shed, and you won't really see much of anything. 
The other benefit of using a solar generator is when you have to connect up those solar panels, it really couldn't be much easier. They're gonna just plug right into the unit. You might need a different adapter or a cable, but you don't have to do any kind of cutting or soldering to make it all work. Now depending on your install, you might decide to put hardwired outlets in your building, but in my case, I've got all these outlets in the back of the solar generator, so for the most part, I'm gonna plug my things right in. I've got the lighting circuit, the other plug is my well pump, and I've got plenty of others if I need them in the future. But if I wanna run a saw outside or somewhere else, I just use one of these real cord extensions, plugs right in the back, and now I can get an outlet anywhere I want nearby. The setup has been working great for me. I've been running the well pump, tools, lights, and I've had no problems at all. But what you've got might be different. You could have different laws that apply, and I don't know if this is safe or legal for where you live or what you're gonna do. So you have to make up your own mind if this project is gonna work out for you, but either way, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.